From Cali to Tally, it's time to wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source, and this is Wake Up Warchant. Now here's Warchant.com's Aslan Hudjavandi and Corey Clark. Wake up! What up, everybody? It's Friday, and we're here for you. Who loves you? Corey, who loves them? We do. They're daddies. It's Wake Up War Chant. He's Corey Clark. I'm Aslan Hudjavandi. You already know that. It's said in the intro. Join Warchant.com if you're not already a member. Use the promo code Warchant30. Just typing those nine characters will give you 30 free days of access. Think about that. That's like a $10 value. Imagine you just hit nine keys on your keyboard and someone hands you $10. Yeah, essentially. What a week it's been at Warchant, too. We've done a lot of good stuff over there. Everyone's like, oh, it's May. What are you going to talk about? Everything. <laughs> Everything. Yeah. Got Ira and Amelia Island. Yeah, he's over there. Got uh, got you doing all your video stuff and this and uh, the podcasting. And, uh, you we, talking to, to me, me uh, the we, next baseball coach at Florida State University. Sure, perhaps. We, uh, we as people that are clicking on this know by the description, we talked to Lonnie Alameda. We did. the For a long time. That's a, yes. That was an hour long. That was like a Mark Marin podcast. Uh, that was an hour long interview with her, which I thought was really good. Um, but yeah, we got that. We got a uh, Stan Jones in a long, just mm-hmm. as long interview with Stan Jones, assistant uh, Florida State men's basketball coach. That's on the site too. Is it? You should probably wait to drop that, man. What? Well, no, because we he ju- he was just elected to our inducted into that Hall of Fame. That was last week. We want to get it out there. Um, so yeah, we put it up this week. So there's a link to the to the whole interview there. So yeah, man, we're we're crushing it. Okay. Okay. As Corey said, plus Ira up in Amelia. I think I said it already, that. but Amelia Island doing all the, all their okay. actual writing. He misses you, Ira. You hear that? I do, buddy. I do. He misses you. But as Corey said, and the item description says as well, uh, this episode there's going to be no football, um, no baseball, no tiddlywinks. Just simply 55 good minutes with the head coach of the defending national champion softball program that resides in Tallahassee, Florida. I could have sat there for another 30 minutes, hour, but she's got her own podcast to do, so we kind of had to let her go live her life. Plus, she's getting ready for the big game uh, today, later today, 2.15, I think, against Bethune-Cookman. Yeah. Uh, the regional here in Tallahassee, softball well, regional. Well, whatever, it would be like 30 minutes after the South Florida-South Carolina game, I guess, is okay. what I would play. Okay, um, yeah, as Corey just revealed, those are the other two teams in the region. Winner of this region would host the winner out of the Oklahoma state Stillwater regional, so if Florida State wins, they would – you know, apparently Oklahoma State's got some sort of uh, virtuoso bat flipper on their team. Yeah. So did, you, uh, did you look her up? I didn't look her up. I haven't looked her up yet, but, okay. uh, yeah, apparently it's uh, taking the softball world by storm, yeah. maybe. Uh, it would be kind of neat to – now, I know Florida State won't do it. That's not kind of how they play. Plus, they hit a ton of home runs. Yeah, they act, too much time. act like you've been there before, you know what yeah. I mean? Just lay the bat down because this is what you do. That's what, uh, what they do. Yeah, so that's who they'd play is the winner of the uh, Oklahoma State Regional and the, and the Supers. So they're not matched up with LSU – or another SEC team for the first time in a long time, I think. We'll see how it goes. Anyhow, without further ado, uh, do subscribe to the podcast, unsubscribe, resubscribe, rate, review, tell a friend. And um, we'll catch up with you all next week. But now, here we go. Uh, Lonnie Almeida, Alameda. Did I say it right? Wrong? I screwed up this whole interview that's coming up, but Corey redeems it per usual. He's Corey Maslon. Enjoy this interview. Florida State's. Defending national champion softball program. Coach, thanks for joining us. How are you today? I love having you guys here at the Plex. We call it the Plex. The Plex? It's okay. a cool place. You're on site at the Plex. Uh, yes. A lot of trophies around this part of campus, too, with you and what Mark is doing at soccer. It's, yeah. uh, it's yeah. a nice, competi- healthy competition between yeah. the two programs. We have the Heisman House. We have the Plex House, right? Yeah. <laughs> All the hardware. Yeah. And yeah. No. I, you know, I mean, Coach Kerkorian's been awesome um, from day one. When we expanded this building, him and I were in that little office area together for a year and then I shared his soccer press box for a year and he's been it's like family it's pretty awesome so yeah it's always you know sorry to take over the go, go interview go right. do, do. I, I ruined I, I ruined it from the beginning you, but, it over <laughs> you did yeah that was a great start so uh I've kind of always with Florida State in particular the the attention that, that they give to the quote-unquote non-revenue sports mm-hmm. the, the the not football and basketball yep um how important is that for the development of a of a uh, a sport like softball or soccer where they do take it so seriously and it does seem like a family in the sense that you guys all really do cheer for each other yeah definitely um i mean you feel that from the day you walk on campus just i think tallahassee in general but florida state too the family atmosphere sure it's definitely unique and different here and um 
you know, I kind of, I I don't know. You know you're a football school. Like when I came here 11 years ago, you know that. You hear the story programs, but you don't ever feel it. You don't ever feel like you're second fiddle, stepchild, none of that stuff. Um, You are part of the family from the get-go. They take care of you in every realm that they can. And so it's uh, it just sets the standard. And we've always talked about success breeds success. You bring successful people in and you put them around coaches and then mm-hmm. you, the kids around each other. And, you know, the kids aren't always thinking championship mindset on the field or the pitch, you know. They're not always – it's champion mindset everywhere. So if you've got successful coaches and administrators and – programs and you bring those kids in now they're hanging out in chipotle or saturday night festivities whatever it is but they have championship mindset and that's huge so um so for one never felt like you know we were any anything different than um part of the tradition and history here and you know representing florida state and then two everyone brings in the best of the best to to want to be the best so it's pretty awesome Want to start this all the way at the beginning, if we could. Yep. So you grew up in California. I did. And went to college at a small NAIA school in Texas. Mm-hmm. And then I guess you bet on yourself after one year and you somehow yeah. ended up at Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah. so how does how does that sort of happen where, you know, a young woman who's growing up in California wants to, I guess, I guess you want to still pursue your dreams and it doesn't matter where the offer is, you'll, you'll take it wherever you can get it. So you, you end up in Texas and maybe not the most... Uh, developed a robust athletic program at yep, St. Mary's. For sure. Um, everyone's journey is a little bit different and softball has come so far. So um, the ways of recruiting nowadays and all the things that are happening, we did not have, you know, and the VHS tape, you know, and the huddle and Exos and all that is a little right. bit different now because girls are on that now too. So, but yeah, NorCal from NorCal didn't really play softball. I played every sport possible. So You're a volleyball player too, right? I was right? volleyball, I played basketball, um, rode horses. I mean, all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, then my club ball coach got the opportunity to go coach out at Oklahoma. So when I was playing club ball, um, uh, I was recruited by two schools, Hawaii and St. Mary's and, and NAI school and then University of Hawaii. And it just money, came down to money. We didn't have a ton of money, and that's what it came down to. So um, St. Mary's was awesome. Um, great learning year. Went out to Texas, grew up a ton. and We did well. We went to the national championship. Um, I just pitched. I didn't hit. I kind of wanted to hit a little bit. I wanted to play. Being a multi-sport athlete and then going into college and just being one position was just a little bit different for me. And so when my coach kind of found that out, you know, he's like, all right, well, we brought you into pitch. We don't want pitchers to hit, so you can find somewhere else to go, which was totally fine. And um, was on my way to play at JUCO in Stockton, California. And then my club ball coach got the job at Oklahoma, and he brought a lot of us Northern California kids out there with him. So um, really cool opportunity. And, you know, I always preach opportunity and taking advantage of them And because um, I feel like my path has been that. People I've met, um, people I've been around, and the door just opens in different areas, and you just take advantage of it, and, you know, you never know where you're going to be. So... And then, you know, I pride myself a little bit. We broke the top 25 when we were at Oklahoma. I have nothing to do with all the championships they have there. But we did break the top 25 when we were there. You got Um, it started. We got it started. But we were still at Reeves Park, which is, uh, for those people in Norman know, that's a slow pitch park. And we got kicked off by the slow pitch teams (laughs) quite a bit. (laughs) And they kept telling us, you know, you over yonder, right over there is going to be this huge stadium one day, and it's going to be awesome. Um, But we never saw that in our time. But uh, we definitely know, and now being in the – college, you know, growth and everything, the the industry part of it, um, we were a little part of that. We were pushing that a little bit and did some good things. So, so. You, you guys used to practice at a public park? Yep. Where you didn't even get to reserve a time? Nope. Oh, that's fun. Yep. So, so the sports come a bit a, lo- a oh bit gosh. of a ways, huh? Even at Stanford when I was coaching there, we were at a slow pitch field there, and I was telling jokes the other day with Jenny Dalton Hill, and we were talking about um, I would have to go out early to the slow pitch field. It was across in the Stanford Mall, and um, – there would be bums hanging around because it was right by the train tracks, and I'd have to make sure that the bums weren't around for the, the players, you know. And we bought a Casey tarp. We got a tarp, and I came out one day, and it was, like, etched all the way around. He just cut right around home plate, and I went to find it, and he made himself a little tent by the train tracks. Smart bum. You yeah, know, sure. Smart. Like, sure. Why wouldn't you Resourceful. do that? But on the other side, I'm like, man, we're Division One. What's going on, you know? So just good stories, and um, I'm so thankful to be a part of that growth of it. And I try to remind the kids, I don't want to be the coach that's like, I walked through snow and uphill and all that. But I do want to ground them to know how far we've come and how grateful we are for everything that we have here and the sport of softball. All right. So you're at Stanford for quite a while as an assistant coach. Yep. Uh, then you get a head coaching job at UNLV. For you, was it ever one of those things where 
you were hoping to leave Stanford for like this, the, the ultimate destination job somewhere like Florida State, or did, did you know you probably had to maybe go to somewhere like UNLV or a Mount West school to, to you know, quote, prove your, your sort of value to, to other programs? Yeah, um, well, probably my last, so I was there 10 years and probably about seven years in, I was getting actual interviews. So I interviewed at Notre Dame, Tennessee, LSU, Washington, quite a few places. And some of them, you know, they picked other people, which is great. I was still too young in the process. And um, some of them just weren't for the fit for me. Like I, I just, I knew that I needed to have a, I need to be warm weather. <laughs> that right, was one. Sure. Like, I'm not going to be an outdoor sport in cold weather. That was one. Um, and two, I just, I just really wanted a place that um, really cared about the kids. That was really important to me. And um, knowing that I'm going to be the all-in coach, I just knew that from the get-go. I was there at Stanford the same way and just wanted to be around people like that. So um, so it was kind of, you know, I got a lot of experience um, doing that. But I, I think I could have jumped into some of the other ones. I just wanted to make sure it was the right fit so I could grow as a person too. And UNLV was that. Um, they just needed a little bit of energy and juice into the program. It was close to my family still out on the West Coast. So it was a good time for me to jump out there and see what I could do. And, you know, spent an amazing five years there. And uh, and truly, when Florida State came calling, I was I was in Canada. And we were getting ready to go to Japan to train for the Olympics with um, the Canadian national team. So it really wasn't the timing or the fit. Um, but, you know, they're like, just come out for a day and – Anyone knows that you come out here 10 minutes, you're like in, <laughs> you know. So, so how did that, awesome. can you walk us through that, how that happened? Did you apply? Did for you the have an head? agent? Like does an agent reach? I mean, do you yeah, have an no, agent at this no. point or anything like that or no? <laughs> no. You should get one now, um, though, anyway. by the way. But did, um, how did that, did, Coach, uh, Randy Spetman was the AD mm-hmm, when, when, yeah. who hired you. But did you apply? Did they come find you? How did that work? Yeah, um, funny enough, um, it was Monk Bonasort actually, because Randy was just here. So Monk Bonasort was probably my the AD for me at the time mm-hmm. in hiring me. So um, funny enough, there was a football coach here and a senior women's administrator that we had connected paths down the line. Um, she was at Stanford in the first couple of years when I was there too. So, and that's just the whole thing about connections and opportunities. And right. you guys know this. You meet people, and you know down the line they help you out and opening doors for you. So. Um, she sat down with TK, and they were sitting and trying to figure out the softball coaching um, line that they were going to look for. So they would brought people in. It just wasn't the right fit. So we're late into July by this time. And, um, and Coach Kraft's been retired for over a month at least. At least two. Uh, yeah. yeah, at least two months, I think. Um, so TK, when I was at UNLV, I did a Title IX committee, and TK was on that for the NCAA, and he came in, and we spent an afternoon together. So when she sat down with TK, and they were putting names out there, and she's like, you know, I, I know this person that was at Stanford and threw out my name, and then he knew my name, and then all of a sudden, they're like, well, let's just give her a call and see if she would be interested in coming out there. So, so that's kind of how it started. First phone call, not going to happen. I'm in a great spot. UNLV's great. I'm getting ready in five days to go over to Japan. This is really bad timing. Second call okay, you know, why wouldn't I, why wouldn't I go out there for a day just to see it? And, um, and this is the crazy thing. So then I called UNLV and I was like, Hey, you know, Florida State's called and they were right away. Like, well, you're not getting any more money here. You're not doing this. You're not doing that. And so it was a little sign to me that if I want to grow as a person and grow as a program right. and I care about the program and we've done pretty well there. Yeah. You know, was it the, f- the first maybe. regional birth they had under you, or had they been to a regional before? Um, they've been to it many years before. Oh, okay. They were just kind of in a little bit of a right. drought. Yeah, Lori Harrigan pitched there, and she was pretty awesome. She was on the USA team, and right. so, you know, then after she um, was done, then they kind of went into a little bit of a drought. So, yeah. But, you know, part of that was opening up the SEC. It, when SEC opened up softball, it changed the whole face of everything. So, but anyways, come back here, and uh, I was here for – like I said, 10 minutes, fell in love with it, Monk, Randy, the kids, the whole thing, and they flew me. So originally I was supposed to fly from BC, from Vancouver, to Tallahassee and back. And direct I'm flight. Tallahassee. I'm sure that's a direct flight, I'm I know, sure. right? I should have known that about this flight. Flew to Tallahassee, and then they flew me from there to Vegas, cleaned out my office, and the next morning flew to Vancouver, and then we went to Japan, played in the Olympics, and then I flew straight into here and then was here until Christmas, and then moved my stuff out at Christmas. Like, that's how fast coaching changes, you know. It was just within a day, decided this so, is the place for me. So yeah. did they offer you in the interview? Mm-hmm, yeah. And you accepted in the interview, or mm-hmm. did you say – so you knew then, I right knew then? right then. Okay. Yeah. All right. Wow, it's you must have like, knocked you know, the interview out of the park. I know. Yeah. Well, I mean, come on. Can you yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it worked out. It was probably a good decision on their part, it looks, in hindsight. Oh, there was a few years that, you know, Randy kept saying, like, you know, are you going to kick this thing going or what? And – uh 
but yeah, I know it's, it's been awesome. So. Well, and I was going to ask you about that. So uh, you've had resounding success uh, really since you started. I think your first season you won 44, mm-hmm. 45 games, and it was consistent. You made the tournament every year. But your third year, mm-hmm. I think it was like 33 and 28 or mm-hmm. 32 and 28, and that's usually the third year is when the program starts to take off and, okay, the new coaches put their you know fingerprints on yeah. the program. Yeah. What happened that third year? And did you ever question – Man, am I, what, what's go, when am I going to get this thing? When is this thing going, going to take off? Yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely, I'm going to say when I got here, it's funny, Sarah Hamilton, I recruited her at UNLV and she ended up choosing Florida state. And so then I come in and <laughs> there you, here go. I get you showed her Sarah Hamilton, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and she didn't pitch up many innings her freshman year. And then I got the opportunity to really work with her sophomore year. And so, um, so I, I walked in right away to pitching, which was awesome. And anyone knows the game of softball or baseball, you know, you got the arms in the circle or on the mound, you're going to do some good things. So, so that was a good thing. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, you know, we kind of hit a little bit of a injury bug, a little bit of trying to figure out some of the recruiting, how we're going to do some things with recruiting. You think about year three. So we inherited kids. Now we're jumping into recruiting. Mm-hmm. We had a lot of Coach Graft kids. Um, the one thing I did not want to do is come in here and say, hey, all you guys are out. You're not my recruits. And so then we were trying to really work in with a model of who she brought in and we were trying to change some things. So it took a little while to um, get the culture piece going with some kids that didn't didn't get recruited with the culture piece, if right. that makes sense. So so we hit that little lull, um, three and four. And we had to win that year. Every sport here was going to postseason. We had to win that year. Uh, it was kind of crazy. We went to the ACC tournament, and um, I remember – we won the tournament, so we were the last team in for postseason, which was uh, the first year for all teams to be in postseason. So There's a lot of pressure um, on it was you. A yeah. lot of pressure. Yeah. I got a phone call from Jimbo. I got a phone call from TK. I got a phone call from. St- it was pretty funny. Like I was just all the people so excited that you know we finally won it. So um, it was kind of neat. So, anyways, um, yeah, I think that's a little bit, and then. Uh, I think the big kick, honestly, um, coaching changes. I made some coaching changes, and Travis and Craig came in, and um, we just needed a we needed some offense, and we mm-hmm. needed an offense minded. Um, and uh, I think Travis and Craig has done a great job of that. And I just turned it right to them and said, "Hey, we need to swing the bats and score some runs." And um, you know, they've done a great job of that part of it. So, and when you watch other sports on campus, because obviously there's a very important one on campus that just made a coaching change with its offense after one season. Mm-hmm. That's not the – people think, oh, why don't they just, you know, fire that coach and hire this coach and all yeah. that. Number one, these are people you work with. These are people you hire. They're friends. So at what point as a coach, as somebody that's, uh, you know, it's your program, you're, this is all yours, yeah. do you say, you know what, as hard, as painful as this is going to be, I have to make change. I have to look in the mirror and say, you know what, maybe these weren't the best hires, and I have to admit that and go make changes. And how hard is that? Yeah, um, it's really hard because when you're coaching together, you're almost in a, a job relationship, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's uh, you're, you're spending a lot of time together. And when you're talking sport, too, you're going emotional highs and lows also. And so you're really in the, the bunker with your coaching staff. And so that's really – that's tough. But you also know as a coaching – or in the coaching realm that – there's success and there's failure. And if you're failing, you're going to get fired. You know mm-hmm. that getting in. So you, I don't think you'd want to get into a job or a position that was okay with you not doing well. Right. That'd just be like playing, you know, coming into being a player and the coach doesn't push you to be the best you can be. So it's kind of the same mindset. So I think uh, conversations when um, my, the, the previous Angel and Sarah moved on and Angel wouldn't be a head coach. That's what he wanted to do anyway. So it was his time to figure that part out. And Pick just wanted to get back home to California and be with her family, and she's coaching a club ball team. So it worked out really well in the transition side right. of it there. So, yeah. And, you know, you can't, I think, too, as a head coach, like you've got to look at the big picture of it. So as you're getting feedback and you're starting to see the numbers, you take the personality part out of it. And if it's not transitioning on the field, then you just need to make changes sure. for the best of the program. So yeah. Did, And you mentioned Randy saying, I don't know if it was an offhanded comment or if he really meant it, like, are you ever going to turn this program around yeah. or whatever he <clears throat> might have said. Did you ever feel external pressure? Like, man, we've got to get this going a little bit. Yeah, no, I don't because um, I know that I'm giving my best every day, and that's all I can ask, and that's all I ask of the players. So um, I always say if I get fired tomorrow, then, you know, I did it the best way I knew how and the best way I could. And if I'm not good enough, then I'm not good enough. So I I think that that's one way to (laughs) low-key your frustration and your – uh, I don't know, freak out mode as a sure. coach, you know, like if I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough. And that's all you ask of your players too is, you know, and I, I don't, I'm not any different than a player. I'm just doing it in a different role. So if I want, 
you know, Megan King to come out here and try to exceed to see best she can be, there's going to be failure times. And sometimes maybe you're just not that good. I don't know. But if you're kind of nervous or scared to tap into that, you're never going to find out what you are. So right. I think that's the same with coaching now. Yeah. Florida State softball head coach Lonnie Alameda joining us here on Wake Up War Chant. Um, coach, I mean, you mentioned like you have mechanisms, coping mechanisms to not yep. let things get too big in your head. But, you know, at a certain point when you keep knocking at that door, um, I mean, how do you pr- – prevent from getting, I guess, frustrated that you haven't made it to, to the level that you want to. And then going into last year, did you feel like the pieces were finally starting to line up for you? Well, in reality, I think uh, the 2017 season was the the year, you know, and, and that's probably the year that was the toughest for us because we lost here to LSU. And that was, re- I mean, it took us three hours to get the kids out of the locker room. It took us 45 minutes to get them off the field. So for people that don't um, remember, you were, I believe, were you the number one overall seed? Or I know you'd been ranked number one for we were a good four, portion I think, of that year. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we and were, yeah. lost game three, right? Yeah. Is that how it worked? <laughs> well, yeah. We won the first game. Correct. So we right. went, we beat LSU in the first game, and you know you sit there and you look at the percentages and say, oh, you know, you're at home, yeah. And you win the first game of the regional, and it's ninety nine point nine six seven percent that you're going to the World Series, right? So right now you're just we're going. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's just in your mind you're going. Um, and then we had uh, Alex Powers would have been a senior on that team, one, right? Yeah, yeah, Ellie Cooper and Jessica Burrows and. So we had a tough game, too. Um, I think maybe a one or two hitter. It was a really close ball game. And then we get to the game three, and it was a dogfight. And we had chances that, you know, they had chances. They capitalized on some things, and we just ran out of some go-go juice, and we lost the game. And then we're not going to the World Series, and they're jumping out on the field. And um, it just – it went from – it's so fast. Within 24 to 40 hours, you know, you're, you're at a high, like, oh, awesome, we got game one. It's in our pocket, too. Oh my gosh, you know, we're not going anywhere. And we had, you know, we went undefeated in conference. I mean, we had so many amazing things through the season. Sure. Um, so that was the year, right? Jessica Burroughs, Megan King, two headed monster, um, offense, leadership, um, legit defense, experience, you know, going. And then you're not going. So then um, I, I kind of looked when I got down to the locker room. Um, was that the most difficult thing for you in your coaching? The most coaching? difficult locker room I've ever been in, yeah. Yeah. Because those kids opened up their hearts to do right. That, that was the first team, like, you know, didn't drink all season, um, did every community service event, did, like, just were the best. I mean, you're talking about, you know, just committing to being the best they could be at all levels. Going to bed at night at 10, drinking, you know, water every day. Like, right. you know, I mean, just yeah. all the things. And I know people are going to joke about this and be like, are you kidding me right now? But you're talking about college kids. Sure, yeah. of course. College kids, you know, yeah. making a commitment to doing every single thing. And I'm not just saying 18 of them. It was all 22 of them. They were all in. And now, and what do you say as a coach all the time? You're like, hey, like, you know, be all in and you're going to get this. If you do this, you're going to get this. And all of a sudden you get there and you don't get it. So then I'm standing in front of them saying, well, thanks for doing that. And, you know, <laughs> you, Enjoy the summer. You don't, yeah, right? Like, yeah. And uh, so I equated it a little to it, like relationship. Like they were all in and, um, you know. And they had their heart broken. Their heart is broken mm-hmm. and they were broken. But on the other side of it, how amazing for them that they have that experience. Because there's not many people in life that allow themselves to be that vulnerable and work that hard for something. And you will have that for the rest of your life. And so, um, so I was just really proud of them for that, you know, but it was, I mean, I, I don't think anyone could get a sentence out down there. Uh, it was tough. And, um, like I said, our, our seniors, it took them three hours before they got out of there and took that Jersey off. Cause that's how much it means to them. So, but then you have those juniors that saw that in that locker room and felt that in that locker room. And there wasn't a more driven group that summer to be in shape and be ready to go than it was Jesse and Callie and Carson and those kids. And so when we got to the the next year, we, as a coaching staff, wanted to have a little more fun. We were driven that year to be the best we could be in everything. And we stopped laughing at little things and having some fun. So we, as a coaching staff, hey, we get to 2018, let's have some fun. You know, we asked the team to lay it out there and do everything possible the year before. You know, let's just enjoy it this year. And then here we are in 2018, and I remember Coach Kikorian coming in this room here, and he said, you know, sometimes it's not the team that you think is going to win the title. You know, it may be a completely different one, and that was the same thing. We thought 2017 had a chance, and then 2018, you know, won it. So it was pretty cool. Well, and there was some poetry in the sense that it was LSU again in the Super Regional, right? Yes. And yeah. then you lose the first game. Yes. <laughs> and I don't know. It's very easy as me being a cynical old man. It's easy to think, oh, here they go again. Here yeah. we go again. Mm-hmm. But then you guys rally in game two and then win game three. Yeah. 
was there a I don't know an exorcism in the sense that it it was perfect that it was that pr- yeah. that team right yeah their fans are kind of obnoxious I'll say it yeah. they're loud <laughs> yeah and to shut them up yeah and to beat that team on this field was that yeah. that had to be great for yeah. your your staff and for your players yeah yeah it was incredible and um, I'm gonna go back to 2014 um, we got boat raced by Michigan here in super regionals. And um, quite embarrassed, actually, you know, still running on us, hit and runs. I mean, the whole nine, right? And we've got our fourth string pitcher in there, if not our right fielder, you know. Right. I and mean, it was just, you know, we were resting Lacey a little bit. And I remember Bree and Tiff, the seniors that year, walked by Michelle Smith, who was the commentator for ESPN. And she, Bree said, hey, you're going to be here for a long day tomorrow. We're here for two. And we didn't say anything to the team at that point because our seniors are already talking about a doubleheader the next day. And then we won that, went to the World Series for the first time. So and she had the walk off that almost hit the parking garage, uh, right? Courtney Cena yeah. hit the walk off. Yeah, moly. her hoin. Yeah, but yeah. you know, I mean, right there when your players are speaking that, you don't have to say a word because in their mind they're ready for. It. And the same thing happened here. You know, we lost that first game with LSU. And um, our kids were like, hey, game two matters. Game two's the momentum. Game two's the one. We come in here, like they think they have it because we were there the year before. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden you're talking about Oklahoma City and what you're going to pack and who's going to go because game one's under your belt. Game two is the deciding factor because now you got momentum. You win game two, now you're going into game three, you know. So um, so huge lesson for us that all of them were talking. Like, we didn't have to say that. They knew that right away. Just keep throwing punches. We win game two. We roll right into game three with the momentum our side versus the now defending it. Like, right. oh, gosh, we, you know. And so – so it's crazy. If you let the game teach you the lessons, uh, you know, you can really go. And, and I think that's what's so cool about our teams. It's not the coaching staff trying to win one for the Gipper and give the speech. It's the players and the upperclassmen telling that to their teammates. And, you know, it was a huge momentum swing for us. And then you go into the uh, World Series and you lose that one, the first one. Yep. And same kind mindset. of the same kind of fact, <laughs> but in the same – you had a lead yep. and it kind of got away from you late. Yep. And again, um, it reminded me of the, the last time y'all had been there. Didn't you make like? Yep. And I'm not trying to bring up no, bad things, but you lost the, to yeah, Georgia. Yeah, no, we talked about it all the time. We, we almost <laughs> set the record for errors. For errors we in a game, away. Yeah. and you only lost by a run, and yeah. you, you had made like seven errors, yeah. and then you came back in that series. Yep. And if the Auburn girl doesn't make the incredible catch, you probably win that game and yep. keep playing. Um, so, build, did you build on that? And yep. also. Were you like after that first the game op- the game one opening loss? Are you like what? Why here? Why did why did that happen to happen have to happen to us yeah. again? Yeah, because it's so hard yep. if you lose the first game out yep. there to come back. Yeah, yeah. I think the biggest thing is um, we we talk about everything. So we talk about the good times and we talk about the bad ones. We address them all because they're all learning lessons. And you know what's funny is. We've learned, we've lost different ways. We're not losing the same way. Right. <laughs> so there's a success to that, you know, because we had the lead and we were dominating and then Kylie went in there. And I mean, if you watch the home run that Perez hit, I mean, it was way off the plate and she pulls it down the right field line. Sometimes you just tip your hat to the game yeah. and that's the way it goes, right? So again, we go to dinner, we get back, we go to dinner. I didn't say a word in the bus, we go to dinner. Didn't say a word at all. Let them chat. Uh, and then all of a sudden they have a team meeting and they're all about it. And, you know, we're going to go on a run and we're going to play one pitch at a time. And we're going to have some fun. So when I had the team meeting for the next day, because we had the next day off, because that's what you do when you lose, you have a day off. And because we know that quite well. <laughs> <laughs> and had team meeting the next day and they were in it, telling us what was going on, completely excited about it and ready for ready for to get after it. And so you can see that in their eyes. So if you, instead of being frustrated with the losses granted if they're the same way all the time then you got some problems but sure. if they're different and you, and you can address them and talk about them we can learn from them now we're becoming better people in general because life is full of failures and then two now we have a game plan for what we want to do as we move forward and so um and they they were on fire every pitch it didn't matter what the scoreboard said every pitch they were on fire and they, I mean, Travis Craig and I just sat back and they went after it. It was pretty awesome. They were telling us what they were doing, and it was pretty cool. That's kind of when you know what you've established as a program, right, yep. as a culture. I, I can't even imagine what that's like as a head coach yep. to see the ownership of the players you've recruited and developed yep. making it their program. Yep, yep. And so many alumni coming back and alumni speaking the same things. You know, Bree's there all painted and ready to get after it, but she's speaking the same lessons in 2014 that we had learned in 2017 to adapt to 2018. Right. You know, so I think when your culture and your program is, is you know, all around speaking the same stuff, it, it just makes you that much stronger as a unit. Yeah. Do you ever let yourself believe at any point during the run that it's going to happen or do you not 
I mean, start counting your chickens before they're hatched. I mean, did, was yeah. there a certain point where you felt like this is just like the, the destiny of this team in your career? Third inning, game two of Washington, you know, I, I started to feel it. It was crazy. I mean, the kids in the dugout were like, I'm sitting change up, I'm sitting this pitch, and then they're hitting it out. Like, they, they were just in a whole nother zone of what they were doing and having so much fun with it. Jesse on the bunt, I mean, she was reading feet and hands, uh, you know, and they're talking to each other. So it's just it's just crazy how in sync they were. At that point, it was completely out. I was like on the back step, just looking up at Stan and Ramona and all our fans up there, just going bananas. Our players going bananas. Um, I could see the tension with Washington, and I know what that's like. You know, you're, you're like, oh, you just you see momentum. You know, we call it Uncle Mo, right? right? Literally sitting in this dugout cheering with this team. I mean, it was just crazy how much momentum was rolling with us and. At that point, no point during the whole time did I even think that, you know, it was just about the next pitch. But definitely about the third inning, it was pretty it was pretty awesome. So anyone we dropped, I don't know if you guys remember, we dropped a pop-up between center field, Sid and Mo dropped a pop-up. Jesse comes up, throws a ball down the right field line. Yeah. They score a run. This is and, the first inning, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. And I walk out there, and um, I, <laughs> they were funny, like, I mean – we're the cardiac kids. We're supposed to be from behind, and they're all laughing. Like, you're right, Coach. We are the cardiac kids, you know? And yeah. I knew right then it was just a, oh, we're just playing softball. It's not like, oh, crap. It's almost kind of what y'all needed, too, right? Like, there, what what she did in that first game, that catch that will lo- that will outlive us all. Yes. Um, and you win that game, and, oh, you're so close now. Yeah. And there had to be a little pressure and yeah. a little tightness. We're seven yeah. innings from being national champions. Yeah. And then to immediately get down – yeah. I feel like maybe it even took some of the pressure away. Like, all yeah. right, let's just go have fun now. Yeah. We can come. Because you're facing a girl, that the pitcher yeah. is one of the best. That's, I mean, yeah. she's incredible. Yeah. And you're already down, what, 2 nothing in yeah. the first inning? That's yeah. a, That could be a big, yeah. big gap. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Did that, do you think that helped, like, getting down early? Yeah. I, well, I think just the, their approach to it. And, you know, it would be the ACC tournament. We were down and we won the walk-off. Yeah. Like, we'd just been – we had been in that corner and rope a dope for a while, and we were able to get out of all of them. So – it was just a matter of taking punches, throwing punches, taking punches, and just not get knocked out. And that was kind of the mindset is just, you know, keep throwing them, keep throwing them, keep throwing them, you know, and, and whatever happens. So you're going to get a few punches here and there. And, yeah, they, they took that mantra. So I think the Cardiac Kids was was there since the ACC tournament, but they took that mantra. Right. You know, it was like, I mean, everyone's going to be like, oh, gosh, what's next? <laughs> you know, and uh, they, they embraced it. You it know? Before we get into uh, this season, which obviously is still going and you yep. still have a lot of goals out there to accomplish – uh, Jesse Warren, uh, I, I have a hard time not calling her Jessica because that's how she was. She yeah. got here. But mm-hmm. Jesse Warren, um, that play she made, I thought was, you know, she, we knew her around Tallahassee. She's an incredible player, yeah. but um, maybe didn't get quite the national recognition yeah. that she deserved. Not yeah. maybe, yeah. she did not get the national recognition she deserved. How awesome was? I, I don't know how many times you've watched that play. Yeah. I've probably seen it fifteen or twenty. Yeah. It's just incredible. <laughs> yeah, but how? How gratifying was it to see her do that on that stage? Not just that play, which is an all-timer, yeah. but the way she hit out there. Yeah. Just how much fun was that to watch her yeah. become kind of the face of that team yeah. in that championship? Yeah, yeah. Um, I. So as a coach, you become almost a surrogate parent a little bit too. And uh, I think I was – I mean, you've seen it. We've all seen it. She, she plays at a high level. She always has. They had 38 cameras on her there. We have one here. So the one camera we get in the angle we get, I mean, we got to see that stuff every single day. Sure. But I'm going to tell you the one thing I was probably most proud of is her interview after the game and just her composure and her love for what she's done and Florida State. And, you know, just like I, I've probably played that just as much as I've played the catch <laughs> because I remember the first day I put her at third base and she cried <laughs> because she didn't think she could play third base. What did she want and, to play? Um, she, well, she was always a shortstop. Oh, okay. You know, gotcha. Third base in the game of fast pitch is, <clears throat> right. it's a little, it's a hot corner yeah. for a reason, you know? And, um, but it wasn't that, it was just cause she didn't have the self-confidence in what she could do. And so from her growth and the self-confidence of who Jesse Warren is and what Jesse Warren does kind of, you know, was all in that play and all in that moment. So I, I'm so proud and so happy that the world got to see softball to high. She's a smart, smart player, you mm-hmm. know, so got to see that. But then they also got to see that with a conversation afterwards that totally gets it, that appreciates growth and appreciates everything that, that college softball or college athletics is. And I think sometimes that's such a good message is you want to see players compete at a high level with their athleticism, but you want to see them match that with – the grateful opportunities they've had and be able to move on right. because uh, she was finally be able to be on a stage that she's impacting so many younger kids 
future Seminoles, boosters, alumni. And I just think that was probably one of the more proud moments as a coaching staff that we had. Yeah. The season, shall we then talk Let's about the season? Yeah. It's always weird, you know, because I remember taking summer classes here back when I did undergrad. And obviously, you know, it, it's, it's a lot more quiet on campus because there's not as many students. But I feel like the postseason ramps up such – it gets amplified, like, yep. especially like around the baseball team. You know, back in my day, that, that's when everything was kind of soaring. Is there a different feel now? I mean, even more so with the fact that you have to – is it a defending national champion mindset for you? Or is it, is it a new season or a new sort of – uh, yeah. journey that starts when you guys host Bethune on, on was it Friday you guys are going to start off yep. with? Yep, Friday at 2.30. Um, yeah, we, um, oh gosh, I think Syracuse, it started becoming Team 36, honestly. It took us that long to figure it out because when we came back, here we have eight new kids. We're still celebrating a championship, you know. We go out to the Virginia Tech football game and we're being honored, which was incredible. But then I got my eighth best part stepchild. of the game. Yeah. yeah, that was the best part of the game. <laughs> um, yeah, but just the atmosphere, and you could tell everybody knew about softball, which it hasn't been the case in the past. And you know, but I got you got your eight kids kind of on the back line walking up, you know, like hi, I'm here, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And um, we get honored at the Capitol. We've we've been honored so many places, and the poor freshmen, you know, one's like, oh, great job, and like I wasn't here, but I am part of it. <laughs> And uh, I tried to keep recognizing them, but didn't want to take away the excitement of it. Um, then you get to the beginning of the season, everyone's like defend the title, and people are sending out pictures of the last year's team with the schedules, and you know, so it's not this year's faces of freshmen. And so it, it was a little bit tough in that sense, you know. And, and I addressed it with them, like, hey, guys, like, you know, this is why you came here, this is what we want to do. So we want to embrace all this amazing um, accolades and, um, I guess the platform that we have to meet people, but want to make sure you feel a part of it also. So anyways, I think we got to Syracuse, whether it was we're done with school and all I have to do is worry about is being a softball player right now, but um, really started to come together as a team. You can see the freshmen really comfortable. Everyone's one unit and there is no defending a title right now. It's about going after something this year. And uh, I've definitely felt that the ACC um, tournament here was, was a feeling of postseason. I don't, you know, our fans, we did a fan day in the beginning of the year just to, to kind of. Your fans are rabid. Yeah. Like, we, so I like sitting outside, like <laughs> yeah. in, the, in the media overflow tent, but I'm right on top of, like, if you go, like, if we can make the national title yeah. game sometime, like, yeah. they'll put you in the national title game, like, all the way up with the fans, like, at the, at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. You're like, oh, my gosh, Go. this is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Your fans have juice. Yes, juice. That is good. Yes. Yeah. It's rowdy. It's awesome. In it. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. They in it. The yes, yes, yes. And we yeah. get a single, the, you know, oh. shooting the spear at second for the doubles, the uh, just all about it, standing up for the two. I mean, little things like that. When you put an extra 800 people on your back with you, you become one amazing squad. So our freshmen got a feel postseason. That was a postseason feel this yeah. week in ACC. So um, so good for us that we had that opportunity because now when we roll out there, Matt, Kat, some of the kids that are going to pitching, it's not any different. You know, you're going to have the same kind of a noise, you know, and, and it's not white noise, it's Florida State noise, and it's pretty awesome. So, yeah. So I'm excited to move forward. I think we're in a really good spot. What was the challenge of, you know, when you win the national championship, man, the target gets really big. Yeah. And especially your schedule early. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of teams that you play that were really good. Yeah. Um, and you did well. You navigated that obviously very well. But is there a uh, – how? what's the challenge being a coach of a program that just won a national championship? Yeah. And there could be a sense of relief. Like, we did it. Yeah. No matter what happens this year, we're national champions. Yeah. You know, how do you kind of – you want them to remember that and be proud of it, yeah. but also flush it and mm -hmm. think about 2019. And yeah. is that a challenge? And it oh, was, yeah. was it a challenge? It's totally a challenge. And, um, you know, everyone's is it like, a challenge it's, for it's, you. Um, not for me. Okay. I don't, I don't think so. You flushed Come it. Come on. Hey, yeah. I was just making sure. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> a, big, it's a really big deal to win <laughs> a national is. championship. Yeah, it is. And, um, you know, I honestly, so I was in the pack for a while and I remember Sue Enquist and Mike Candrea, you know, before the SEC even jumped in the, the, the Pac-10, 12 was the softball hotbed, right? right? Arizona and UCLA have more trophies than this room can handle. And um, and I remember always listening to Mike Candre saying, hey, if I could give you this trophy right now and let you know that it doesn't change your life, like the journey is the life, like the journey and being part of the team. And, yes, it's awesome to win, but, you know, being engaged in your kids, watching them grow, um, win over seasons, be successful, that's what fills your soul, not the trophy. If you get caught up in going for the trophy – then you're going to lose that moments, 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 lots of them, right, of enjoying what you're doing. 
And I've always remembered that, you know, because um, it was just a, kind of a big message for me because I do love being around the kids and watch the growth. Mm. I want to win. I'm very competitive and I want to win. But again, if you don't don't enjoy where you're at right now, you're going to get that trophy and have missed all the relationships and all the growth moments and maybe the continued success over time because you're just hunting for the trophy. Right. You know, so um, remember that. So anyways, probably had one of the most fun seasons last year that we've ever had. But to sit there in the third inning and see the team have ownership, like you said, watch the team have ownership, watch a kid's interview after, watch them completely enjoy the whole journey of it. That wasn't trophy chasing. That was actually playing softball at a high level. So I think that's the goal for me is to, to have kids play at a high level and experience giving themselves to something bigger than them. And if you can get people to do that in general, like you're tapping into a passion in your life that's going right. to be amazing down the line. So that that's my end goal. Um, and you won 51 games this year already. Yeah. Um, so it's it's obviously you're obviously doing well on the right. diamond. But were there times when it was a bit of a struggle? To, oh yeah, yeah. To this year, focus up. Well, you know, we come out, we go down to, you know, we're undefeated going down to Clearwater, and we're playing some beasts down there. And then we knock the socks off of it and hit home runs left and right. And yeah. so, you know, I mean, just so now all of a sudden you've got hey, win it again, win it again. You got people that never even watch softball that now you know Florida State fans are like, yeah, let's go for the. They're going to go undefeated. And, yeah, <laughs> totally. and that was the talk then, right? right. Now defending the town, and we're undefeated, and we're number one, and we're doing this. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, at some point we're going to lose games. At some point we're going to go into a drought hitting. At some point we're going to make a lot of errors. Like it happens during a sure. 70 game season. But now we're getting a lot more pub and a lot more following. So now when the, when we start to fall a little bit, it's going to be big time. So. We just kept addressing it. You know, we're undefeated and the kids are excited about undefeated season. Could we be undefeated? And I'm like, hey, at some point, at some point we're going to fall. At some point we're going to get beat. At some point, you know, and like we've got to continue to stay grounded where we're at. And the hit came and we lost to Louisville and we lost to UNC. Um, and we weren't hitting and, you know, but we could go back on conversations we've been having the whole time. And so outside noise is great. Fans are fans for a reason. Right. But really where we're at when we meet as a team in the room, these 25 people is all that matters. And that's what we kind of have to keep grounded to. So, and I always answer whenever I was like, win another one coach. I'm like, yeah, it only took 25 years. I got the, <laughs> I've got it right now. I know exactly how to win it. I mean, it, it's just, it's kind of fun, but that's what fans do. You do you know. know how many home runs your team has hit this year off the top of your head? Oh gosh. Uh, 80, 94, 94, yeah, I was gonna say 94. 94. Yeah. And your opponents have hit 24. Nice. You have a gap of 70 home runs. <laughs> Look, you obviously know more softball than anybody in this room by a yeah. wide margin. That's not normal, is no. it? What yeah. is going on with you guys with the home? How is this happening? Uh, Your whole you, team, you, you have, have eight? to have Travis and Craig in here swinging, talking that one. But uh, I'm going to go with experience. Experience is huge. But are you recruiting different? Is it? Is, I mean, I know it's development, too. Yeah. But are you recruiting types of players that you know can develop this kind of ridiculous power? Um, yep. Yeah. Recruiting's okay. a big part of it. Yeah. That's what you look for though, is p people that can, it, softball's changed so much a little mm -hmm. bit from just, just get on base, yeah. slap it. Obviously that's not your, right. <laughs> it's not it's your not idea of how to play right. softball. Mm -hmm. yeah. Was that, has that always been the case with you that yeah. I want thumpers? I want, I want eight or nine people in the lineup that can all go deep. Um, can go deep and can run. Okay, we sure. We want athletic kids. Yeah. So um, I'm going to say six years ago, Travis Craig and I sat in this room and said, okay, what's a Florida State style player? Like, what do we recruit? How can we identify? So when people come to us or we get out looking at people, we can walk by kids because they're not exactly a Florida State style player. And we had to get on page with that. So I think recruiting, um, identifying our type of recruit has been big for us. Uh, and then we teach the game. So we yeah. really want to teach the game. And these kids, we look for smart kids that want to play at a high level. And um, it, so it's not just one or two, because Jesse Warren was our, you know, thumper last year. And But, you know, they've got Sid's done. So Sid's been the doubles, and now she's turning those into home runs. Right. Mason's got the power. You know, it goes all the way down the lineup. Literally, it goes all the way down Callie the lineup. Carson. Yeah. yeah, Danny. I No one even talks about Danny Morgan and things she does, but her scrappiness comes into play huge. So um, I think it's it's a little bit of the mindset. And um, Travis and Craig, most people, too, don't have two hitting coaches. They have one. We have two. And uh, they run the offense, and they work with it. And, um, yeah, I think they do a really good job together on that part. Yeah. Yeah, uh, apparently. Yeah, right. They're, yeah, I don't think you're, <laughs> nobody's complaining and about we, it. And, you know, honestly, I think at the beginning of this year, we're like, oh, we'll see what we have. I think we're going to run a little bit in situational hit. And situational hitting has shown up for us. But then all of a sudden the big swing comes into play too. So. Well, it started early. Yeah. I mean, that first tournament against all those great teams, yeah. it's like, oh, good. They hit three more home runs. Yeah. 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 
Good job. Awesome. Hey, you're doing it. It was yeah. awesome. Yeah, it was <laughs> I awesome. bet. Yeah, that's so, probably yeah. fun to watch. Yeah. When you recruited Megan King, did you have any idea that that was a, a young lady that you'd be able to kind of throw into the fire in Oklahoma City, like down 01 already in the tournament? Like, hey, bail us out of this thing right. and make it happen. I mean, just yeah. how amazing has she been for you here the last, you know, last two years, I guess, really, especially? Yeah, so um, Megan King's story, she committed. She was signed to go to Maryland, and uh, they had a coaching change. And then all of a sudden, she comes out of that letter of intent. And um, so we had, she was on our radar, but not really on our radar. And then she comes out of that letter. Whose fault was that? Uh, She's just sort of on the radar. (laughs) Well, the funny thing about Megan is she developed late. Yeah. She wasn't, she wasn't, a, she was a lefty, which is, you know, we all know lefties are important and they're a little more important on our game right now, but, um, but she grew, she blossomed a bit later and, um, she redshirted a year and I think that was the biggest growth for her. So I remember her out here again, you know, I think that the frustration and tears, you know, when you get kids to that point where they're just like, they don't know. And I remember Megan out here and we were working on sitting pitches and she was telling hitters what she was throwing. And she was so frustrated. She's like, I can't tell them they're going to hit me. They're going to hit me. And I'm like, so what? Still beat them. You can still beat them. And it like broke her down to like, wait, like I can get hit. Like I can't, I don't have to strike everyone out. And I think that's a big thing for high school kids coming to college is they try to be something that they were before and then something that they're, they're not like you can pitch to contact. And that's what Megan's so good at. So we kind of got past that point, her red shirt freshman year, and we started jumping into it. And she started, you know, she went out to the World Series in 16 and, and got beat. And, um, but she started to just relax and let her competitive nature kick in. And if you guys come in here and you play cards or tiddlywinks or whatever it is, Megan will go to We're big another, tiddlywinks guys. Yeah. Poor especially. Yeah. <laughs> right. Whole nother level of competitiveness. Yeah. Whole nother level of competitiveness. Like, it's crazy. And when you can tap into that um, and get kids competitive and then – Put that through whatever they're doing, pretty impressive. And that's Megan. Uh, I wouldn't say she's the most skilled pitcher out there, but she is by far one of the most competitive pitchers out there. And we got that out of her. She doesn't care how she gets you out. I'll strike you out. I'll ground you out. I'll pop you up. I don't really care. Double play, but I'm getting you out. And uh, and I just I'm. It's been so cool to see her go. And in postseason, the most competitive time of the year is when she shows up. And she's been in so many postseason games for us, competing. Her experience now is is pretty comfortable in that environment. But it feels like you've done a pretty good job managing your arms. To, that she's not the only person that, that's yep. going to be ready yep. w- once this ride really starts picking up steam. Yeah, I think I could have done a better job of it, honestly, at the beginning of the ah, year. Um, yeah, <laughs> well, I was actually going to say that. I'm yeah, glad right? you said it. I was going to criticize you a lot for that. <laughs> well, you know, you, you got to develop Herzog a little yes, quicker. Yeah, exactly. I know. So looking back at it, but the problem was, is we got there, and now you're kind of hunting an RPI, and you're hunting a national sure. seed, especially early, right? Yes. Because of those teams. Yeah, huge games. Yeah. huge games for this number four seed and so that was the balance we didn't really know what the ACC was going to bring us and you can't run into conference and expect to get that respect for the RPI so now we can we can hunt that a little bit and if you're going to do that you're going to do that with your experienced kid and so so the balancing of that I don't think I did a great job of it but I feel like we've caught up a little bit Um, getting Mac the start and the championship game was huge, you know. Um, she started against Florida here, too. So getting her those moments of being in a big environment was big for her. Kat's been great. So, you know, we've got two freshmen that have been in some big moments that can do some things. And I expect they're going to be they're gonna be big this weekend and next weekend down the line, yeah. It Ooh, is, say so. next weekend. Yeah, right? yeah that's right. Yeah. Well, the, well, the week after that, the week after line, that, yeah. Go, yeah. <laughs> How good is uh, is Sydney, Cheryl? I mean, I, I, yeah. she's she's – what she's done so far in her career yeah. seems like she's kind of on a trajectory like some of the great ones you've had. Yeah, yeah. Ball player. She's just yeah. a ball player. And I think her and her father. Where's she I from? Mean, she's from Oklahoma. That's what she's from. Is she not Norman, but close? Or? Well, more is like you know, right. just right there. <laughs> yeah. She wanted to get away from home, I guess? Yeah, or? Um, yeah. She, okay. she wanted to get out a little bit. And um, she, she originally committed to Arkansas and then decommitted after a coaching change there, too. Yeah, we were recruiting really her. really doing well for you. And, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> decommits. We did recruit her early, though, and she chose Arkansas over us at a younger age. But I think that was a little bit because she's closer to home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Arkansas and Oklahoma close to home. And mom and dad are like, are you kidding? Florida State's so far away. But I think for Sid, for a while, there was like, oh, it's good that it's far away. Right. Um, but, you know, her and her dad spent a lot of time together and grew. And um, she just she she's a ball player. You can put her anywhere, and she's going to make plays. I mean, she was great at second base for us last year. She's great at second and third for us this year. She played shortstop. I mean, she hits. I I mean, she's tough to beat, mm-hmm. hitting-wise, just tough to beat. Her, you know, she's got a great swing. Um, 
She's just really good at fighting off the end. And I don't know, if you ever watch her battle, I mean, she'll flip the balls away. That's a really mature thing to do. Don't want that. Don't want that. Ooh, I'm going to get after that. You right. Know? And um, so her mindset is pretty awesome with that. Yeah. But amazing teammate. Oh, really? Oh, my gosh. So much fun. Has so much fun on the field. Um, the kids love playing with her. You just love being around her. Well, that's so, good. Well, you know, one of your best players is like that, yes, right? Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't speak up a ton. Because she, I don't, she really doesn't want that leadership role of like tuck your shirt in, be on time. She yeah. just wants to be Sid, right. uh, and there's a big, big spot for that on a team. Be you know, be a really fun player that can play that people want to be around. Right, and, uh, keeps it kind of loose that. a little bit too. Oh, totally yeah. keeps it loose. Yeah, totally keeps it loose. She's she's awesome. So when did that um, become important to you? To to be was it after seventeen after LSU that like because it was noticeable how much fun you guys yeah. were having even in pressure moments. Yeah. Has that has that always been something you you believed in as a coach? Yeah. Or did okay, it has been. Mm-hmm. Why? Yeah. Did you have fun as a player, or were you tight as a player? Um, no, I had fun because you know I was able to play seven sports. <laughs> you know, so well, it's, sure, it's yeah. A different. I I feel like um, at Stanford when when we were at Stanford, we had to make it fun for those kids. They had they they had to be straight A's in school. They had to be you know the best on the field. They you know and. You got kids there that were so worried about how many bounces the ball would take and which way they would throw to. It was so analytical. Right. Like, just pick up the ball and have some fun and throw someone out. Like, you know, let's enjoy it. So I, I think I got it from there. It's just to just to enjoy. And, and if you hit a bum on a bad throw, you hit a bum on a bad throw. <laughs> you're right. You know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. They're in the park. Um, so, yeah. Enjoy it. Have some fun. Tried to try to relax them a little bit, and it just it kind of went all the way through to Vegas into here. Yeah. And that's so that's a, almost like a founding principle of how you want to run a program. Yep, for sure. Because you see it a lot with for some sure. in this in college. Well, all walks of life, but college baseball, college softball. Yeah, there are some like drill sergeants that yep. it just does not look like fun. Right. Is that a recruiting pitch too? Yeah. Do you yeah. use that on recruit? Not maybe. Hey, don't go play for him because he's a maniac. Yeah. But we have fun here. Yeah. You will have fun here. Um, I, it's not a recruiting pitch because I think that when you walk into this place, just like I did when I came to visit, you're going to get a feel. Mm-hmm. We're going to be who we are all the time. So there's no red carpet. We're not going to tell you what our resume is. You should feel it and see it with our team. So I, I think that would be our recruiting pitch. Is you know when you come around us, this is this is what you're going to get day in and day out. Six a.m. workouts to three hour practices to a weekend series somewhere. We are who we are. So. Um, so that's what's so cool about TV and being on TV now is people get an inside look at our program sure. and, and how we do things. So, yeah. So that was the fun part of the World Series, too, is people saw a lot of that. Yeah. And they, they were appreciative of winning at a high level and having some fun. I can't tell you how many emails or phone calls I got from people saying, thank you, that I don't have to be a jerk on the field. Crazy, right? Right. right. It freed people up from like, oh, I know there's one way to yell at kids. Like, Throw the ball. Throw a strike. Well, I mean, the kid is not trying to throw balls and walk the kid. Right. They're not going out there. Let me walk the bases loaded and see how mad I can make my coach. Like, no one's <laughs> doing that, you know? But what do we do as coaches and parents? Like, throw a strike. Throw it over the plate. Are you kidding me? You know, yeah. bump the ball. Like, the kids aren't out there trying to do that. And I think more and more, if that's happening, then you're not doing a good job as a coach or a parent, you know? Like, uh, that's the reflection of you. And so um, so it was fun to, to get a lot of people to reach out and just free that up. But, I mean, you look at Joe Madden with the Cubs. Mm-hmm. I mean, I watch, you know, the hard knocks and the NFL stuff and the, the training they do mm-hmm. and how much fun they have off, you know, off field, I guess. You know, they're trying to build team bonding because that's a big part of society today and getting teams to work together. So. Sure. Maybe we had a little jump start on it, you know, uh, working with some sports psychologists, Ken Revisa, Brian Kane. Um, they get to be around some of the highest level athletes and environments. And real is a big thing. Mm-hmm. Be real. Have some fun. I mean, you are a family right now, and you're going to spend a lot of time together. So enjoy it. Yeah. I guess you kind of answered it there. We'll, we'll land this plane. you got your own wildly popular podcast to, to, to record <laughs> yeah. here. Coaches and Coffee, the Florida <laughs> State Softball Coffee. Podcast. Yeah. Check it out, boys and yeah. girls. <laughs> uh, but but the, cult, the culture aspect uh, – is such an important deal now with sports. I think, you know, for me, I've always kind of had this archetype of coaches need to be these like really gruff drill sergeants, but we're seeing more, whether it's you or a guy like Dabo Swinney in football, it's just, you know, you can kind of put your arm around kids. How much of the culture aspect for you was something that you, you kind of had in mind or are there things that coaches would tell you, this is what you need to have to to have a successful program or is it stuff that you've just kind of pieced together over the years or is it something that you've had for a long time that just, just stayed steady and constant? Um, I think there's two answers to that. One is, 
Um, I don't think I'm the same every year. I think um, we always try to go out as a staff and we reflect at the end of the season, what was good, what was bad, what can we do different? And then during the summer, try to um, tap into something else that can help us. So I know like this last year, we were able to go to Jimmy John's headquarters and just two are behind the scenes. Why are you successful? I mean, it's a sandwich. How, how are you so successful? And just seeing how they interacted in the ownership. So, you know, they have, if you're an employee there, you clean the kitchen, you do things, you take ownership of your own area. It's not janitors that come in and do things. And I just, I thought that was so awesome. And we have a leadership group and let's clean our own dugout. Let's do our own thing. Let's, let's take ownership of our place and appreciate it. You know? So it's like, you try to learn things as you go along the way to keep growing as a, as a person. So, um, but then the other part of it is, and I learned at a young age is kids will see right through you. The minute you're trying to be a coach, um, and not be the person they're going to see right through you. So if I try to leave here at five o'clock and go be Lonnie the rest of the night, like that's going to be really hard to, to be coach Alameda here. And I know for a long time, everyone said you wear different hats, but I am the same person with those hats. Like, you know, I'm going to be the same person all the time. And I think that's how you gain the glue of a team, you know, from the top down. If you are who you are all the time, it's pretty easy for kids to trust you and believe in you. And, you know, um, let themselves be vulnerable. That's a, that's a big part of it is just be okay with failing. I'm okay that you're failing. Like I am really okay with that. Because She's looking right at me. She says yeah. that. So I feel <laughs> are failing. It's really, really resonating with me right now. <laughs> no, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> if anyone is, I'm the one that was late today. I'm the failure today. But, uh, um, but yeah, so I, I think that the big part of it is just to appreciate them, love them. And, um, you know, when they get to be around you all the time and see that you're not putting on a certain hat, then, you know, you, you gain some trust. Trust is the big part, right? Big part of it. So. so we don't talk too much about culture. Like culture is, is legitimately one of the, I don't know, outside of like evaluating talent as the most important mix into like a championship caliber program. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, culture is the key word to how you live your values. So you can say culture, you can throw, we always talk, you can throw all these things on the wall and all these measurements and all that, but if you don't do it and live it, it doesn't matter. You know, you, I, I, sometimes, you know, I, I think about people that write out their standards or their rules and it's great. Like we do this, we do this, but when you get to the nitty gritty, do you, and then do you hold yourselves accountable to it? Uh, you know, it's just, it's silly. So tucking your shirts in for practice, like we tuck our shirts in. So I can go down there every day and be like, tuck your shirt in you're not tucking right, your shirt in. Right. But is your senior doing it? Is your junior doing it? That when you're in your culture is that you're, you are holding each other to an accountable standard. And that's so hard for people to do. And everyone's like, how do you get girls to work together? They're so catty. I'm like, humans are catty. Humans are tough, <laughs> right? Yeah, right? It's not yeah. a girl or a guy right. thing. It's the ability to walk up to someone and say, hey, you're not living the standards. That's culture. So it's a word that you can throw out there. But if you're living those values that you guys believe in and you bought into and you're all in for it, then it's not hard. Like, oh, yeah, you're right. Tuck my shirt in, you know? Quit being a jerk right now. You're over for it. Who cares? Like, quit being a jerk. I need you on the field. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm on the field. Right, you know? right. That, that's a big, big thing. <clears throat> and it's the players that are doing it too, which are can be the players that yeah. are doing it. Yeah. yeah, I hold Scott to it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it's the whole program. I mean, why come out here and say that we're going to work 365 days for a goal and not hold the standard every day? It's not just going to show up in a championship series. And granted, sometimes it will. Sometimes maybe you have the talent, but it's not going to show up in the championship series over and over and right. over again. So if you're sustaining success, you've got people that are bought into doing the right thing and living the values. And, and that's probably what I'm most proud of is we talk about our gate down there and separating this world to the softball world. And if that continues to go, you're always going to be pretty prepared to be in those big moments. And yeah, that's been pretty fun. I don't know if you, I'm sure you did uh, as you were winning the ACC championship this weekend about, I don't know, two big punts away. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mike Martin was coaching in his last I home know. series. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know the relationship you have with them or with, with baseball, but do you see yourself being here for 40 years? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Want to be here until you're in your mid-70s? All mid, those people on that one, huh? Mid-70s? <laughs> yeah. Uh, can you put into words how yeah. impre- how incredible that is to, co- to, to coach as long as he has? Yeah. And, and seriously, bringing it back to you, do you see yourself – Wanting to do this for two, three more decades. Could yeah, you do it? Yeah. I, and I think Coach Martin's special in the sense that um, he was in an era that coaches did do that for a long time. Sure. You know, now coaches are getting paid and they're retiring earlier. And my key is, like, the minute I can't 
communicate with the kids, I need to be out. Like the, it's just not fair to the kids mm-hmm. that I'm trying to, and I know that there's a livelihood to it, but if I'm not getting to you, then that's not good for the program or the kids and their growth part of it there. And, um, I think junior and some of those guys are his caveat for that to make that happen. But, um, but I'll tell you when I went to the dinner, I did go to his dinner the other night and, um, uh, the roasting, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think when Luis got up there and talked about the human trophies versus the, the championship trophies. And, um, I thought that was so cool because I think a lot of people want to look at the wins and losses and you're hired for wins and losses as a coach. But if you are winning more throughout the years and you're building people, I mean, essentially that's, that's what it's all about, you know? And so I I thought that was really cool on that side of it. But, um, I would love to coach until I can't coach anymore. My dad still asked me what I'm going to do after I do this coaching thing. Like, he just doesn't (laughs) know. What are you going to get a real job? Yeah. Is this a real (laughs) job? Are you serious? You know? And both my grandparents, you know, they, I mean, they had bed breakfasts. They built houses in San Francisco, like just such a different era for us, um, in the coaching realm. Yeah. I, I get to do my hobby every single day. Right. It's so amazing. And so lucky to do that. So, um, so yes, till a day I can't coach anymore, I'm going to be coaching cause I love it. And I've got so much experience from being around other amazing people that I want to give it to the future coaches. Right. You know, Ellie Cooper came here to be a coach. She's coaching in softball right now. We just try to give her everything we had and be able to move on. So she's impacting, you know, the growth of the game. So. And it's going to be here, right? Place, You're not going to be going yeah, back to yeah. Stanford yeah, right. or the Pac-12 <laughs> or anything, right? You're here at Florida. You're that traffic yeah. out there. Right? Yeah, exactly yeah, right. Yeah. You stay here for the long yeah. run. Yeah. <laughs> We're working on it. you got to call my agent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll be your agent. Yeah, right? Sure. <laughs> All right, we got good news and bad news, Coach. Uh, the good news is we're done with you. You can start your day off. Bad news is this is really good. We're going to probably have to do this more often. I so loved it. Thank you. Really yeah. thank you for your time. We'll yeah. do it before Oklahoma City. That sounds great. Yeah. Ahead, Head coach of the defending national champion Florida State softball program, Lonnie Alameda, joining us here on Wake Up War Chant today. Thanks so much for your time, Coach. Thank you. Warchant.com is the ultimate inside source for FSU football and recruiting. And now you can get in on the action for free for an entire month. Warchant.com is offering a risk-free 30-day trial subscription. Get full access to the number one website covering the Seminoles just by entering the promo code WARCHANT30. That's WARCHANT30. Sign up and get in on the world's most active FSU message boards. Receive breaking news, stories from our award-winning staff, plus get exclusive interviews and videos. Just enter the promo code WARCHANT30. WARCHANT.com, your ultimate Seminole sports source.